Hi friends, uh, we are into our course on uh, risk-based engineering and uh, the topic we are discussing uh, is system reliability modeling. In fact, uh, in the fourth week, uh, we discuss part A, that is traditional methods of uh, uh, reliability and risk modeling, uh, wherein we, uh, we discussed uh, uh, fault tree uh, analysis, event tree analysis, uh, and before that, it was of course uh, reliability block diagram and uh, uh, to K, uh, K out of N systems and a uh, few more aspects. And that way we winded up with the uh, traditional method of uh, risk modeling. Here we are discussing uh, some uh, advanced method uh, that is, uh, and then some complementary tools uh, which are useful uh, for uh, risk and uh, reliability modeling um, and uh, in this chapter we our emphasis will be uh, basically uh, how to go for dynamic modeling uh, you know uh, the traditional uh, risk assessment approach or to be very specific uh, probabilistic risk assessment approach uh, it is static in nature of course there are uh, r&d uh, work going on all all over the world uh, to have a dynamic uh, PRA and quite a bit of work has been done but uh, still it is uh, 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 you know uh, it is uh, not used on regular basis the way static approach is popular uh, for risk modeling. Uh, so uh, this is the reason and now, now why we are discussing this uh, dynamic approaches. I uh, will just give a background uh, that either uh, we connect our PRA input, uh, right, like, uh, you know, uh, component availability and other information uh, to some real time system, like uh, the, the uh, status of the equipment is coming from, uh, from the plant and thereby the, uh, we have plant configuration and it is as uh, operated condition of the plant, uh, so that uh, in dynamic manner uh, we can see the uh, Okay, yeah, if our parameter is of our interest is core damage frequency or even system unavailability, we can see instantaneous values of those parameters. The second thing uh, will be why we are uh, have, uh, interested in dynamic modeling is uh, often the simulation uh, provides answer for many things like if I have a simulator and I want to uh, operate various configuration of the plant, then uh, then uh, by uh, connecting my PRA model to the simulator, I can get these inputs and uh, see the uh, see the uh, risk statement and many other condition. It could be even uh, importance measure or even if physics para okay, we can relate it to physics parameter or accident condition and things like that. You know, so uh, this is second uh, thing. And third thing, uh, anal analyst, they require, uh, the, uh, analysts often they require uh, that you know their work of modeling should reduce. At the same time, they are, uh, their model should exhibit a dynamic, uh, dynamic model in the sense that uh, if the plant configuration is changing uh, uh, in a, you know, during its a service, uh, then they would like to, uh, even at the software level, they would like to change some input they would like to knock down one system or they would like to add a system uh, when the uh, you know accident uh, accident progression is going on through the uh, event tree so that dynamic event tree will come into picture so at various level there are uh, there are expectation from dynamic model and of course uh, that there is a lot of literature suggests lot of work is going on in this area so now let us see uh, one is that uh, advancement which are going on number one. I have selected few one which are directly related to PRA and the second thing is I have I have taken a few complementary approaches which are relevant not only for traditional for even advanced approaches also. So these complementary tools are also there. So let us uh, try to have an outline of what is laid down for this week actually you know. So first we will give background and introduction. Uh, some points which makes the uh, advanced approaches uh, relevant and beneficial and uh, we will just uh, 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 we review the state of the art in advanced methods also. Then 
मेजर रिस्क एंड रिलायबिलिटी अप्रोचेस तो हियर अवर स्कोप कवर्स डायनामिक फॉल्ट्री डायनामिक इवेंट्री बाइनरी डिसीजन डायग्राम एंड एज आई सेट द कॉम्प्लीमेंट्री अप्रोचेस आर टूल्स लाइक कॉमन कॉज फेलियर एनालिसिस एंड देन इम्पॉर्टेंस एंड सेंसिटिविटी एनालिसिस एंड ऑफकोर्स वन टॉपिक मेंटेनेबिलिटी बिकॉज नाउ डेज इन द प्लान मेंटेनेबिलिटी एज पार्ट ऑफ reliability centered maintenance or risk centered maintenance approaches is becoming uh, of a lot of interest actually so this is the this is the whole syllabus for the week and few more uh, things you will see uh, as and when uh, when the aspects are discussed it will be coming in uh, so let us uh, go to the background uh, as i mentioned the traditional approaches uh, they had a uh, uh, fault tree event tree Uh, there there were some limitation and there were some advantages uh, advantages in the sense that uh, the given the present background and availability of professional softwares that are available for modeling uh, pra or fault tree or event tree as an individual system uh, or tool uh, then uh, the, the we have we have really got benefited from these tools uh, to the extent that uh, if i to take the case of uh, nuclear power plant Uh, these things have become very very popular most of the nuclear power plants they have not most i would say confidently now that uh, all nuclear power plants around 4 430 across the world are 430 for 430 uh, 433 uh, across the world they are having level 1 probabilistic risk assessment uh, there is a lot of work going on in level 2 because pra is done at three levels in nuclear power plants pra level 1 that is system analysis pra level 2 that is containment phenomena assessment and level level 3 is the uh, risk uh, from potential risk uh, from the uh, plant to the public domain in the public domain so of course you know, so far the figures have shown that these uh, estimates uh, they show that the probabilities in the public domain is very very low for advanced plant their figure could be 10 to the minus 8 or 10 to the minus सेवन आर टेन फॉर्म एंड एट आल्सो विच इज यू कैन से हाइपोथेटिकल सीनेरियो द अवेलेबल लिटरेचर शोज ए ग्रोइंग इंटरेस्ट इन द डेवलपमेंट ऑफ एडवांस मेथड बिकॉज बिकॉज देर आर डेफिनेटली सर्टन एडवांटेजेस हाउ बिकॉज वेन वी परफॉर्म पी एस ए इन डायनामिक मोड वन सिंपल रीजन इज एट एनी इंस्टेंट ऑफ टाइम द पी आर ए मॉडल रिफ्लेक्ट्स the as operated uh, condition of the plant so the actually uh, actual availability which we go by our traditional static method and uh, and uh, uh, using this dynamic model um, there is a consensus in uh, open literature that unavailability uh, will be less and there will be a real time reflection of the, uh, uh, reflection of the plant and which is something uh, non negotiable you know so that means r&d has to go on so that's why r&d effects appears, appears to be challenging of course it has to be challenging because uh, ideally speaking we are trying to connect uh, uh, connect uh, the, this uh, from the sensor to the uh, to the software and uh, to the uh, operator who will be sitting uh, for example take the case of risk monitor so if in risk monitor if we have a graphical uh, representation of uh, change in risk uh, in dynamic manner or for that simple matter that operator wants to take a decision that i will i'll i'll shut down one equipment and i'll start another equipment um, it could be in the same group or in some other other group what is the uh, risk or safety significance so uh, that that can be simulated in offline mode also and you know, after it has been done when the status changes we can always see uh, that what was the uh, what was the uh, what, what kind of results and predictions were there actually so uh, uh, the, uh, the the r and d efforts they are coming um, you know if not very very uh, promising but they have shown at least specific applications they have demonstrated that uh, dynamic approaches they work uh, and and then in terms of computational capability uh, yes uh, the dynamic models they demand uh, uh, very high computational speed so sometimes it gets uh, into trip of this uh, state space uh, explosion of events 
and uh, then uh, then there is a this is putting one of the limitation or and some of the limitation come from the data also like now there is a there is a uh, uh, there is a uh, uh, strong awareness about uh, improving the common cause failure data and there are some internal uh, inter, uh, internal agencies like iaea and uh, uh, nea they are working and they are the databases are being developed uh, but then uh, common cause failure and human factor uh, they are sort of uh, 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 key figures uh, because uh, in uh, they have very high safety significance and the at the same time the uncertainty associated with this uh, this category of event like common cause failure or uh, human uh, error data is relatively more compared to the hardware systems and then exploitation of uh, existing platform like uh, simulator or risk monitor for obtaining the data and for the in fact these two platform the simulator and uh, uh, risk monitors they further enhance understanding of the plant management or operator um, on accident scenario and in fact if some limitation is there then if uh, and if that limitation is uh, identified then probably uh, one can think about um, uh, having some input from the plant also and uh, one can think about the safety uh, safety uh, improvement um, uh, safety, safety improvement activities so uh, this is the background for today's rocket so dynamic modeling is the uh, is the uh, uh, key aspect that we are going to discuss uh, along with the, that the complementary aspect like uh, common cause failure inspection importance of the because they play a key role in uh, risk analysis now before we go ahead we have to see what uh, what is our uh, lens for seeing the dynamic uh, aspects so i can see two dimension uh, that we are trying to see one is spatial dimension that is how the how the plant state is defined in terms of status of the equipment or hardware or software number one uh, and then second thing is what is happening to these equipments in temporal domain that means time and special domain together form part of the uh, uh, complex modeling and of course there the uh, human factor uh, plays uh, or impact both the aspects uh, so uh, so we have to see management control aspect this slide i had shown uh, uh, in my previous lecture but then here i wanted to emphasize the point that what is the scope and then if i talk about that how many components i have to uh, i have to address or how many uh, system i have to address then these are the things even if it is a process system or if it is a safety system or uh, the depth of the management uh, uh, management uh, and control system so uh, we see that uh, it is uh, a challenging issue and this need to be addressed or backed up by data and computational um, uh, computational uh, resources so uh, here we go and uh, if i have to tell you how to capture these two that is plant dynamics um, plant dy plant dynamics also include transient in fact the transients pose much much uh, complex challenges compared to the uh, normal scenario when the equipment status uh, uh, over a period of time they are changing but they are changing in a manner that they are not imposing uh, a, a sort of a uh, constraint on control room operation so um, but the so, but the actual scenario remains that the equipment status they keep changing and then um, uh, sometimes it is in a very they spread out um, maybe in terms of uh, uh, hours minutes and even days but sometimes it could be that tra transient like i was talking about uh, it could be in a very short time so uh, but then it does happen and they have a correlation with the time so uh, that is where the modeling of uh, dynamic scenario uh, becomes uh, challenging so if i see that in spatial domain uh, i am trying to signify uh, the spatial domain by this uh, uh, st status of some of the equipment let us say you can uh, I, i have taken a small piece of uh, you know chip from my plant and i am trying to um, show how in spatial domain the status keeps changing and how in time domains uh, they uh, their uh, 
register uh, various stamping uh, over a period of time. And finally, this could be t uh, T1, T2, and go, it, it can go up to Tn state. And uh, that's how the modeling uh, should be capable of. Okay, so you can see here that uh, this is the wall status remains same, but uh, uh, from from here to here the status of wall has changed, and since status of wall has changed, status of pump has also changed. But uh, later on it remain uh, same, uh, and here also the breaker status uh, uh, has uh, is has been maintained. Uh, so through these three equipment. Uh, I am trying to communicate uh, the scope of uh, work that is involved in uh, risk modeling. Now, uh, we come to our first uh, dynamic tool uh, that is uh, dynamic faultry. The, we know that we had the uh, statis, uh, static faultry and it used to operate uh, between success and failure mode, in between states unless until a special uh, efforts are made, they were not there. The valve is open or the valve is closed. Pump is operating or pump is shut down, okay. Uh, so here, uh, I would like to point out that uh, though, though uh, I'll not be uh, discussing it in detail, but later on if I find in my lecture, I'll discuss this aspect. Um, the plant operation has got a uh, huge aspect of uh, qualitative data or qualitative information or qualitative expressions. So they are not captured uh, or rather uh, quantitative methods are not capable of capturing th those methods. So uh, there is a, uh, luckily, uh, there is a new uh, topic, it is called uh, fuzzy logic. So uh, sometimes if the information comes in, in terms of uh, qualitative data, like uh, for a certain, uh, certain aspect, uh, if the operator crew or the uh, survey is made, then operators can define in terms of it is very good, it is good, uh, it is okay, and it is not acceptable. In these four, so how to convert them into a quantitative estimate? Because risk modeling requires quantitative estimates. And this fuzzy logic uh, enable integrating, uh, integ uh, integrating with some correction factor, uh, this uh, fuzzy input uh, to the uh, fault tree if permitted because there will be uncertainty along with this. So those uncertainties have to be uh, understood well before we really take steps into connecting the fuzzy input. But definitely this fuzzy input, they provide quantitative input. Uh, the way we do uh, for uh, quantitative input, uh, at the end of the day, we store in our memory, not the quanti quantitative uh, data, but we a feel factor, what comes. If the failure probability of the wall uh, or diesel generator is 10 to the power minus 2, uh, then what goes on, uh, or 3 into 10 to the power minus 2, what goes on? Some improvement is required, okay? So we say it is not good. So these kind of uh, humans are more, um, uh, more uh, natural to handle the quality information and uh, take decisions uh, along with quantitative also. Then dynamic information like time, change of status of equipment generally are not reflected other than the limited con conditional events. So uh, um, if for failure there was some conditional event or uh, for a combination of k out of n, if there was some conditional event, then the static fault tree is not capable of capturing those things. The, if we want to check, uh, the, uh, the the subset of that configuration, then we have to go for uh, one more simulation. Uh, uh, it could be faultry simulation, it could be inventory simulation, or it could be uh, risk simulation. So, uh, but then in a da dynamic approaches like faultry, uh, they uh, they provide some environment where uh, the signals or the inputs can be managed uh, to reflect the uh, real working condition of the plant or plant uh, configuration. <coughs> Dynamic fault tree uh, is, uh, has, has been shown to improve uh, nuclear safety 
uh, at quantitative level uh, because the unnecessary conservatives which was also built uh, in um, having uh, with some assumptions or with uh, data uh, that can be done away or with configuration that goes away and uh, the analyst says that uh, uh, you know freedom to to model the fault tree, uh, fault tree uh, with uh, these kind of things uh, using uh, certain combination of input conditions and all those things. <clears throat> Modeling in temporal domain, especially we are mostly will be bothered about the uh, tem temporal domain for certain plant condition or human condi uh, in intervention that lead to failure or operating uh, equipment or some of the aspect can address more effectively. Because in plant either st status changes because of hardware uh, malfunction or aging or and other things even hu human intervention can uh, which is there to uh, to uh, run the plant uh, thousand, thousand times and ten thousand times a correct action but one action uh, in, uh, uh, in thousand uh, operation or ten thousand operation or ten uh, ten four or five operation um, it is called error okay so uh, now consider the emergency cooling uh, system availability is to be evaluated for a change of uh, status of the equipment right from intent. So let us take the case to make uh, to better understood the dynamics how it is uh, getting percolate down and how it is becoming the modeling is uh, trying to catch up uh, with this kind of situation. We have taken a very simple example of loss of coolant accident. and. Um, uh, uh, and and for catering to loss of coolant accident, uh, because loss of coolant accident, uh, if it happens in the plant, it is not a accident as long as the safety systems are coming and and trying to uh, bring the situation uh, back to normal. Um, so uh, so so then that means the connected things is cooling system which uh, which has to switch in during loss of coolant, and this system is called. Uh, emergency core cooling system, you know. So, loca happens at a time t is equal to 0 and accumulator which had uh, along with that ECCS also had come and then the uh, you can see the condition of ECCS but then it it uh, it uh, shut down or it uh, stops supplying cooling water due to uh, one of the two uh, redundant uh, accumulators, uh, one of the two redundant accumulators so uh, these two accumulators, uh, one first one get exhausted, and you can see ECCS sh sh up down condition uh, we are approaching, and then once once uh, after a certain event it could be automatic or it could be manual event the accumulator two uh, gets in, uh, injected. So you can see uh, uh, at uh, at uh, t two time. Uh, the accumulator number two or B, it it find, uh, gets uh, comes into operation and again the injection becomes normal, and then finally at T3 again the accumulator two uh, T3 has uh, stopped or you know uh, then uh, this you can say uh, the notion of time is that after a very very long period because you know in the uh, reactor the the uh, the coolant system is required as long as there is a uh, uh, significant potential of heat, but uh, after uh, the plant is shut down, uh, within a uh, few seconds, the the heat capacity of the plant in shutdown mode it comes to less than five percent. In further low, uh, as given in the uh, situation, so uh, you can say then second accumulator when it failed uh, or you know, it went out of the service, it was not even required also. So that, that is the situation. So this is the dynamic modeling availability of accumulator and how ECCS up and down situation has been dynamically captured. It was just an example, you know, uh, hypothetical example, just for uh, communicating the. Uh, how to build a uh, fault tree and all that. So dynamic fault tree and all that. So uh, now if, I, if we come to a dynamic fault tree modeling, then the dynamic fault tree, the there are certain uh, five or six entities uh, which we must, uh, we must uh, know uh, before we get on to develop our dynamic fault tree. So this is called, first event is called, uh, entity is called the priority end gate. That means end gate with certain priorities, you know. So suppose if there are uh, A, B, C, three inputs. So there will be a priority uh, for these inputs. So they should come and in that chronological order. So then only the output event will occur. Let us say B has been given priority over A. 
so B A C. So that priority has already been configured into the software, or it it was there in the plant, which has been reflected in the software, and that's how the output will occur accordingly. This cannot be done with the uh, static fault tree. For static fault tree, if I have to uh, handle this condition, I have to create a second fault tree with this new configuration. And that way, if uh, if the priority keeps changing, uh, you know, then uh, for certain situation, uh, then uh, I'll have to create that many fault trees. But it can be easily handled in the uh, dynamic fault tree. Uh, this gate has already been discussed uh, earlier. We have discussed priority out, uh, output gate, uh, end gate, you know, and all, uh, and so uh, this is the advantage we have over here. Then house event. It is a very interesting component of uh, uh, <laughs> dynamic fault tree. In fact, this we have uh, house event we have discussed in our static fault tree also, because often in static uh, uh, static fault tree, if I want to reflect a contribution of a system into the main fault tree, so a sub fault tree was there. If I want to plug in, um, but I do not want to want it to remain plugged in for. Uh, different situations which are being analyzed are different event trees we are we have constructed. So then in that case, I'll have a house event which can be switched on and off as and when required. So uh, this will be a case uh, uh, literally for like simulating uh, our uh, risk scenario uh, while, while studying various consequences or uh, you know hazard events. So uh, the house tree is there, and now there is a spare get, uh, spare get. Spar gate. So spare gate is basically um, one gate. There are so they distinguish between the input coming to a uh, event or uh, is main input and spare input. So uh, this uh, gates uh, gate have one more uh, main point, main input, and one more uh, one or more uh, spare inputs. So it can change number of inputs can be many actually. This is what we are trying to say here. Now, the gate has provision of defining minimum number of components required to deliver an output as gate failure. And when the, when the main uh, component fails, then the spare is, uh, spare is switched on and the system fails when the failure criteria are met. Okay? So, uh, so uh, example is in two out of three system, okay, out of n we have discussed uh, two failure out of three is called the failures. So that can be can be re reflected uh, in the uh, spare gate and uh, you know uh, main gate actually, and this is very efficient efficiently handled in this one. In fact, we can change the status of which main and which uh, spare. It could be B a main, A could be spare, and that that configuration can be changed. Then sequence enforcing. That means uh, uh, it's called ACQ gate, sequence gate. So output will be only when the input comes in certain sequence. The gate is used when modeling uh, uh, requires failure to occur in a given predetermined sequence to register. So unless if the events are not registered in predetermined event, that means let's say uh, if I want to say that uh, in real time situation, pump, uh, a pump I have identified one pump. Uh, which is high capacity pump. So pump A should come, then pump B should come, which is low capacity, pump C should come after that. Why? Because uh, we need higher flow in the beginning, lesser flow in the beginning. So if they occur in this event, if the failure occurs in A, B and C in that sequence, then we'll call the output will occur. Okay. So this is how it has been done uh, in dynamic fault tree. Um, yeah, so sequence gets uh, we have discussed. Now let us discuss a very small example. And since uh, the house events we has we had discussed earlier, uh, with an illustration uh, we will try to see uh, how the events. So there are four epoch T1, T2, T3, T4 on the x-axis, and on y-axis we are reflecting QT, that is unavailability, and at the bottom uh, figure uh, in case A we have H1, that is uh, H house events, the, their status. So let us say the gate is a OR gate, okay? And OR gate, one input is uh, B1 and other uh, gate is house event, H1, okay? Now, time de dependent component is given by QT, which we can see uh, on this graph. We can see on this graph, um, yeah. So, so uh, QT is here, you can see here. And then we have H component. 
So H component has been shown here. That is house component has been shown here. Okay. Now uh, application of house event to the model here we have not considered other uh, other dynamic event. We have considered house event only. Um, and the case B um, uh, case B deals with house event with end gate. So uh, the case A is with R event and uh, case B with end, end event. And we'll see that there is a matrix is formed. Uh, if you look at this uh, uh, time, epoch of time, 0, 1, 1, 0 for R and for end gate it is 1, 0, 1, 1. And finally, uh, we have this uh, G1 is equal to H1 into B1 uh, for end gate and uh, G1, H1, plus, uh, we, we all know that, uh, addition and multiplication. And these are the condition have been given for H0, H1, house event 1, house event 2, that is G1 is equal to 0 and a, for H1 condition, G1 is equal to B1. So this will be the output. Similarly, for our input also, we have this event. So you, you can see we have uh, modeled uh, the matrix parameter parameter of uh, high and low. And this is the freedom that we got uh, through R and N. It was a very simple and elegant example to get the ideas of dynamic fault tree modeling. Okay. Now, uh, there are some conclusions or some observation uh, or I would say even inference on the uh, modeling of dynamic fault tree. Uh, let me tell you, I have not taken you the, uh, into the complexity of uh, dynamic modeling because often a huge component of software comes into the picture. Uh, after uh, Often a huge uh, uh, complex component of uh, uh, conditional events uh, come into the picture and when we want to do a, even for a modest size of the fault tree, the events combinations are so complex that it is very difficult to explain. But if, I, if, if one has to get the concept of uh, dynamic fault tree, then this was sufficient and probably as we go on working on our, our uh, fault tree to make dynamic fault tree uh, by inputting dynamic conditions and situations, uh, then we'll get the idea on that, you know. So uh, the time dependent event QT and the role of house was, uh, never, uh, has been demonstrated uh, for the dynamic scenario. Then second observation, DFT enable modeling of equipment outage at various epoch of time and analysis of various operational boards of labor. You know, in time domain, how the status is changing that we are able to model as we had discussed before even we came to the illustration. So as shown in case A and case B, R and end gate, uh, we have done the modeling for uh, in combination with the house event. The available literature so shows that Boolean operation um, uh, in the uh, dynamic, uh, whether it is fault tree or event tree, uh, particularly as part of PRA, often becomes computationally prohibitive for use of dynamic fault tree approach in a full scope PRA model. Because it is called, it may be called as explosion of uh, events or it may be called as explosion, uh, you know, uh, explosion of uh, uh, gates or explosion. So, so uh, that way, uh, computationally it is very expensive and often it becomes prohibitive also. The simulation approach provides an alternative approach to dynamic fault tree. So, uh, so, so uh, if I want to make a, uh, a reflect something like dynamic event, then probably I try it with my um, simulation approach uh, using uh, writing a complex program. It could be even intelligent uh, tools like uh, uh, AI and machine learning and I can, uh, I can uh, for specific events uh, with the limited scope, uh, those scenarios can be uh, studied. And it is quite possible that when we deal with AI and machine learning, it can, uh, it might be more effective and because here we are, uh, we are dealing with certain inputs in certain fashion, but we do not know whether we have considered all the spectrum of input. So that can be done uh, using AI. Um, by a random selection of events. Uh, here also can be done by random selection, but uh, the experience is AI has got a better scope uh, because uh, it can deal in non-linear type of problems also. So there it is more effective actually. And now what we have discussed so far is uh, DFT provides an uh, effective approach to modeling, te temporal modeling as well as, uh, uh, temporal as well as, uh, yeah, temporal modeling uh, and spatial modeling also in terms of uh, status of the equipment. And DFT gets uh, have been discussed, we have uh, discussed, uh, we have presented all the gates uh, to the extent uh, if one or two 
uh, would have remained or I would have left. Uh, you can just see in the literature. The estimates of unavailability in temporal domain represent the real time scenario uh, more accurately. This is a sort of a, most of the uh, simulation which are being performed in dynamic foldry. Uh, this is one of the observation that unavailability value in, uh, in uh, static foldry will be more compared to uh, if you use dynamic foldry uh, because dynamic foldry can remove the over conservatives built into the assumption and uh, data and methods. DFT procedures illustrated that house event in combination for the R and it even though uh, yes, it was a simple example as I had uh, mentioned. But then it, it brings out the concept. The Boolean operation in a large or complex fault tree uh, for the case of PRA becomes prohibitive. So, um, though we see few examples in the literature, uh, but uh, if it has to become um, uh, acceptable method it um, uh, you know so among the among the researcher uh, or even if, even the analyst uh, then it has to be a well proven method well benchmarked method uh, and it should be able to handle all the uncertainties of modeling data and analysis so with this uh, uh, i uh, i stop here uh, explaining the dynamic fault tree uh, now uh, in next lecture we will go to the dynamic event tree because fault tree and event tree are the core and critical component of risk modeling. Thank you very much.